At number 10 is Klitz 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 Plick. Just put the name up on the screen, please, because I, I can't pronounce that. This guy, believe it or not, is actually a descendant of Cal L. This weird little dude hails from far in the future, around the 67th century to be more specific, but he is immortal, so he's also encountered as far into the future as the 853rd century. He is also known to be a fifth dimensional being, which means that he can explore dimensions beyond the understanding of any normal humans, including myself. I don't get it. And I'm not alone. Most heroes wouldn't even understand it either. He has all the classic Kryptonian powers, but due to his bloodline including genes from a whole other race of superpowered beings, this future version of Superman also has 5D vision, which means that he can share his thoughts with others in real time, among other things. And he uses a weapon called the Hyperpoon, which is a hilarious name for a weapon that functions beyond the means of our comprehension. It's basically just more 5D stuff. At number 9 is Super Batman. Not much is known about this guy other than that he was at one point part of the Superman squad. He is known as a mixture of two different heroic traditions, having descended from both the Superman and Batman families. Of course, he wears a uniform that marries the designs of both Batman and Superman costumes and seems to have a combination of the two heroes strengths as well. Sometime in the future this guy is formed and even though there's little known about him, I put him on the list because a hybrid of Superman and Batman must be pretty powerful to some crazy degree we would never understand. At number 8 is Superman Secundus. In the DC 1 million timeline, Superman Secundus is explained to be Superman Prime's direct heir, having founded the Superman dynasty and successfully fighting off the tyrant Sun as well as Solaris, among others. Then in All-Star Superman, another future Superman named Superman 2 appears, who seems to just be the same version of the hero as Superman Secundus just in a different iteration. This future stuff gets a little bit complicated, but this future Superman seems pretty powerful, and since he's known to be the son of Superman Prime, I felt I just needed to throw him on the list. At number seven, we've got Connor Kent, or FKA Superboy. This future version of Superman is pretty unique in that he's actually a clone of both Superman and Lex Luthor. He spends his youth in fear that he'll turn out more like Lex Luthor in all the worst ways, and unfortunately, that's actually what happens. As Connor grows up, in into a more mature hero, he gains a reputation as a brutal version of Superman who uses extreme force against his enemies with little to no remorse. But later on during the Infinite Crisis storyline, we learn that this future Connor Kent is actually a clone of an early version of himself, which is a relief to him, and but doesn't make much sense. Does it make sense? I don't know. Anyway, he's not Lex Luthor, at least. At number 6, we have Adam Ken plus 477 SPMN. The future is horrible at coming up with names apparently, but anyway, this future version of Superman is pretty cool because he kind of comes across as so futuristic that he's actually a much more complex being, but also a sort of simpler and stripped down being than Superman is now in a weird way, which is how it seems like the future would actually be if you went forward far enough. In Superman number 400, we see a future where Superman has died and his descendants have reproduced with humans, creating a new type of super being. But when they accidentally create a massive vortex in space, one of their leaders, Adam Ken, elects himself to plug it while the rest of them turn themselves into energy for some reason, to protect themselves. Anyway, the plan works and the vortex is mended, leaving only Adam Ken, we'll just call him Adam, leaving Adam as the only living being in the universe. So he thinks, until he meets his Eve. At number 5 we have the DCAU Superman from Batman Beyond. Only aging slightly, leaving some grey in his hair, this version of Kal-El is actually turned evil by Starro the Conqueror, who influences his actions over time to fit his evil agenda. But before this is found out, Superman leads the Justice League Unlimited for a while into the future, even inviting Terry McGinnis, aka Batman Beyond, into the League. It's good he does this too, because Batman becomes the one who frees Superman from Starro's grasp down the line. This version of Superman is a more experienced and stronger hero, and although he's tricked by a villain into doing some evil deeds, this isn't a list ranking power or wit. This version of Superman is just one of the more well-known and respected, and I figured he at least had to go in the top five. At number four is Jordan Elliott. 
This is one of my personal favorites of these future versions of Superman because it's a rare example of a future Kal-El hanging up the mantle of Superman and actually living the existence of a mortal man, which I think is a pretty cool glimpse into the character and how he would act if his life were simple and much less influential. His motivation to do this is that he actually ends up killing Mr. Muxia's put luck, which Thank goodness, so I don't have to say the guy's name anymore. Who he kills after the annoying little dude lays out a number of bad things to happen in Superman's life. In a fit of shame, Superman voluntarily walks into a room containing gold kryptonite which strips him of his powers permanently. He then takes on the name of Jordan Elliott after his father Jor-El and marries Lois Lane in anonymity. And honestly, I'm happy for the dude because we don't have to deal with that little mixiesta plick guy anymore, right? And also Superman's done enough. At number three is the Superman from the Dark Knight Returns storyline. One of the most iconic storylines involving both Superman and Batman takes place in a future where the government, aka Lex Luthor and Brainiac, has control over him and they force Superman to carry out missions for them as a kind of superpowered contractor. A brainwashed superpowered contractor, that is. Seeing this from afar, Bruce Wayne decides he has to venture into the dangerous territory of mortal versus alien combat, taking on Superman 1v1. Luckily, Clark Kent comes back from his brainwashing, but only after a huge battle between the two former friends. At number two is the Superman from the Kingdom Come storyline. This iconic future version of Superman has to come out of retirement to protect the human race against a new, misguided group of younger super beings. A more grizzled, aged, and wise Superman, the Kingdom Come storyline brings a ton of humanity to the character as he faces the challenge of humbling himself and his allies in their older age. After a murderous superhero named Magog is acquitted of killing the Joker, Superman goes into hiding for 10 years, leaving Kansas to be overrun by a community of misguided superpowered beings. Having also lost Lois Lane, Superman becomes jaded, but ultimately comes out of hiding to reform the Justice League. On top of reforming a younger generation of misguided heroes though, and well, a brainwashed Captain Marvel, which adds a huge rut in the whole works, they have to also prevent the humans from dropping three massive nuclear bombs on Kansas, which are also super powered to affect super powered beings more than they originally would. This version of Superman shows a side to the hero that we are not used to giving him a wiser, more jaded disposition. It really proves that doing the right thing is just in Kal-El's blood, no matter how much the world has betrayed him. At number one is Superman Prime. This has got to be the most powerful and iconic futuristic version of Superman from the comics. And don't get this mixed up with Superboy Prime either, that's a whole other guy. Superman Prime appears in the DC 1 million series and sets out at the end of the 21st century to explore the cosmos. He then returns briefly in the 700th century, that's roughly 70,000 years later, and spends his time in his new fortress of solitude which is the sun. Finally, another 10 and a half thousand years later in the 853rd century, he comes back again, this time with a totally golden makeover and creates a new Lois Lane from scratch along with some other key players from his old life. This version of Superman is just completely overpowered and more of a god than many other iterations of the hero, giving us a glimpse into the vast expanse and possibility of a distant future for Superman. At number 10, we have Weapon X Wolverine. First appearing in X-Men Alpha number one, this version of Wolverine is missing one hand and fights in a Magneto-led version of the X-Men. It's hard to imagine Logan being even more grizzled than we're used to, but with face paint and a ton of built up resentment about the whole missing hand situation, this version of the hero shows what age can do to a person, especially when you're creeping towards the ripe age of 300. Known as Weapon X in this future reality, this Wolverine soon becomes known as Weapon Omega, and to be fair, his anger isn't the only thing driving him to be more vicious than ever. This version of Wolverine is augmented by the Celestials and can only eventually be stopped by Jean Grey. At number 9 we have Counter Earth Hawkeye. This could be contested whether or not he's from the future or just an alternate reality, but time is kind of hard to follow sometimes when dealing with interdimensional travel. So I'll leave this one up for debate. Regardless, it's a pretty unique version of Wolverine that I thought was worth mentioning. Franklin Richards writes a new version of Hawkeye in Onslaught Reborn number one, 
who appears to be a different iteration than the one we're used to. And that's because behind the mask is actually Wolverine and not Clint Barton. On Counter Earth, this version of Wolverine is part of the Avengers and it seems to me that this alternate dimension is further along in its own timeline allowing for Wolverine to possess some kind of magical ability brought on by Blastar the Living Bomb Burst. At number 8 is Phalanx Wolverine from the newer comic series X Deaths of Wolverine, released between January and March of 2022. This version of Wolverine travels into the future to save a being who is very very important to the mutant race. And as he travels through time, he starts to envision memories from his past. Memories that he hadn't ever before been able to recall. One of the more significant of these lost memories is one where he was present during the birth of Charles Xavier, saving his family from Omega Red. This storyline uses a future version of Wolverine to remind us that this hero, being the most published in the history of Marvel Comics, has so much history that there is still new lore to be uncovered even in 2022. At number 7 we have Logan from Earth 1051 1, 10,511. Another iteration of Weapon X, this version of Wolverine appears in Wolverine Weapon X issue number 12 for just a brief moment. But in the short time that he appears we get a glimpse into a whole new world where Wolverine has lost both his hands, replacing one of them with a hook. During a major battle in a distant future, he comes in to support his team with a big black beard and overgrown hair and a costume that is seems entirely upgraded. He's got metal shoulder and chest pads with a utility belt and he seems like, well, seems like he's been through a lot. He fights against Roxxon to take back the government but is eventually, spoiler alert, killed by Deathlock. At number 6 we have James Howlett from Earth 96099. Only appearing very briefly, this future version of the hero is totally missing his arm after his battles with the Hulks, which seems like a theme, this whole no arm thing. But anyway, this time he's also totally bald as well. He decides to recruit a new X-Men team with a new race of mutants that he encounters in his future timeline. His goal is to rebuild Baltimore of all places after it is destroyed along with much of civilization after a major war, but he also has to protect the world from an army of mindless hulks who continue to act as the main threat in this storyline. At number 5 we have the Wolverine from Wolverine The End. This comic series is known to offer the reader a look into how these characters face, well their ends. And in Wolverine's issues, we face what seems to be an even older and more grim version of an old man Logan. But for Wolverine, we're left with a cliffhanger instead of his death, suggesting that there will be even more future iterations of Logan and or James Howlett to come. In the final issue of this The End series, James faces off against his own older brother, John Howlett Jr. And as they duke it out in front of an audience of military personnel, James ends up accidentally killing his brother, driving his claws through his chest after a fall. After some epic final words are exchanged, we watch James sit in silence as it's suggested that he is apprehended by the authorities. But this isn't confirmed, that's actually where the series ends. This is definitely one of the more gothic and darker versions of Wolverine and the dark epic storyline that this series explores really reflects how much Wolverine has been through over the years, even into the future. At number 4 we have Ultimate Cable. We all know that Cable is a time traveler and the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Well, on Earth 2107 this isn't the case. Instead, James Howlett takes on the mantle of Cable and sports a big scar across his face. This is from a battle taking place in the future where this Wolverine version of Cable or vice versa, fights Apocalypse with the X-Men and his arm is once again ripped off. When Apocalypse absorbs his healing factor, he uses the severed arm with the claws on it against Cable Wolverine and leaves a massive scar on the face. And since this and the dismemberment come after his healing power is taken away, these wounds remain. Luckily, this version of Wolverine has other abilities like Cable's and eventually finds a way to travel back in time 30 years to collect Professor X and try and right the wrongs of the future. At number 3 is Old Man Phoenix. First appearing in Marvel Legacy number 1, this version of Wolverine is, as you could imagine by the name, Old Man Logan possessing the Phoenix Force. Hailing from Earth 14412, this version of Logan basically mirrors that of 616 Logan 
up until King Loki wipes out humankind. Logan is known to be dead under unknown circumstances, but is soon chosen to become the new host for the Phoenix Force and travels the universe destroying celestial bodies on his way. When he eventually encounters a future version of Loki, he goes back in time to undo the damage that Loki had done letting go of the Phoenix Force in the process. And this is a request by Loki himself, after seeing something that changes his intentions for supreme power on a dime. This version of Wolverine is definitely the most powerful on the list, both in influence and sheer power. And he looks pretty badass as well, like an old angry wizard. Fire wizard. At number two, we have Old Man Logan. Just good old Old Man Logan. Everyone knows this one. I wanted to put him higher on the list than his Phoenix Force counterpart because even though the previous entry is more powerful, Old Man Logan is just more iconic. Old Man Logan first appears in Fantastic Four number 558, but is most well known for his own self-titled series. In this future, Logan has a family, but is in constant fear for his life as most of the world is ruled by supervillains. Most superheroes are dead this far into the future and with his family on the line, he becomes a driven father and husband, packing a punch even more powerful now that it's driven by love and the fear that comes with it. After he raises enough money to protect his family from the Hulk gang, which is a thing in the future I guess, the gang kills his family anyway, leaving old man Logan with only one choice to kill the original Hulk then and there. He is then integrated into the mainstream Marvel Universe after the events of Secret Wars. At number one, we have the Days of Future Past Wolverine, or Wolverine from Earth 811. On Earth 811, this version of Wolverine lives in a time 33 years ahead of the modern 616 version. And when the Watcher from Earth 9997 looks into Logan's past, he unveils that Logan's past isn't quite as it seemed. Instead of being born sometime in the 1800s and tested on in a lab, X-51 finds that he had actually descended from a tribe of humans known as the Moon People. In this future storyline, he's faced with the task of protecting the mutant race after the Mutant Control Act is put into effect and Sentinels are ordered as the protectors of America. After a few search and rescue missions, Wolverine joins the resistance and fights with his mutant comrades, including Magneto, to defeat the Sentinels. In this reality, Wolverine has all the same powers as the 616 version, but he does have access to the Watcher's transportation devices as well on Earth's moon, which could transport him anywhere on Earth instantly. Number 10, Legends of the Dead Earth. In Legends of the Dead Earth, the surviving human population of Earth are all basically aboard a spaceship, which drifts kind of aimlessly through space as it's lost its heading. The humans have also been on the spaceship so long, they basically forgot there's even a world outside. However, Batman rises up among them to become a hero and help them once again find their way. This Batman is not the Batman Bruce Wayne, but instead a well-meaning citizen on the spaceship who learns the truth about how they are basically lost. He takes up the mantle of the hero from old folklore known as Batman and inspires a girl aboard the ship named Triss Plover to help him in his fight to fix the ship's navigation system. It's actually a really depressing story though because in the end she's like, man I'm not going to be alive to get to this planet. What's the point of anything? Number 9, Saint Batman. Saint Batman was the name Azrael took up in one of the dark multiverse alternate realities. Here Azrael had taken up the cape and cowl in Batman's stead after his back was broken by Bane, but refused to give back the mantle and instead of Batman defeating Jean-Paul and taking the mantle back, Azrael basically won that fight keeping it. He turned Bruce into a shadow of his former self, removing all his limbs and keeping him alive through kind of a cybernetic life support thing, which also seemed to cause Bruce extreme pain. Years later, Bruce is saved by the son of Talia al Ghul and Bane. However, it turns out in rescuing Batman and later defeating Azrael, they really just swapped out one awful tyrant for an even worse one. And friends, before we head on to the next point, if you are loving this list, we would love if you headed over to our Facebook page and gave it a, a like and a follow. It really does help us out over here at YouTube, so thank you. Number six, Jace Fox. Jace becomes Batman in the possible future we get a glimpse into through DC's Future State event. In this event, Jace Fox, also known as Tim Fox, one of the children of Batman's allies, Lucius Fox ends up becoming Batman in a cyberpunk dystopian future where Gotham has become a police state. Jace is a mysterious figure but stumbles upon Batman's tech and decides to try and use it to do some good, despite the fact that at this point all masks are outlawed in Gotham. Jace Fox keeps his vigilante deeds and persona a secret from 
the rest of the Fox family. Many of his combat skills come from his life as a mercenary and from Katana, who he was once a protege of. Number 7. Justice League of Assassins In the alternate future reality of Earth-14, the JLA is a little bit different. Instead of being the Justice League of America, they are known as the Justice League of Assassins, which still perfectly fits that same acronym, so yay. JLA. Like in the main reality, Batman also ends up joining this team. The world they live in seems to be a post apocalyptic war zone, when we see the JLA in issue number 15 of the 2016 Superman series. Despite their most valiant efforts, the Justice League of Assassins, including Batman, end up defeated and killed by the prophecy. Batman actually ends up losing his head as a result of this fight. He's like the first one to go. Gets his head shot clean off. At least he still gets to finish what he was saying, though. As his head pops off. Number 6, Helena Wayne. In the alternate future reality of Earth 2, it is Helena Wayne, Batman and Catwoman's daughter, who lives on to carry on the Batman legacy. Helena Wayne is often known by the name Huntress. Not to be confused with Helena Bertinelli, the Huntress of the main continuity, but eventually goes on to take up her father's mantle of Batman. Yeah, not Batwoman, just Batman. Kinda love it. We haven't gotten to see too much of Helena's Batman in action, but I have always loved the idea of Catwoman and Batman settling down together and having a daughter who would one day be inspired to carry on their legacy and become a hero using either of their superhero names in their honor. Number 5. Dark Knight Returns This is an older version of Bruce from Frank Miller's alternate future reality of Earth 31. Here Batman comes out of retirement when Harvey Dent returns. To make matters worse, the Joker also escapes custody. Not only does Batman have Dent, the Joker, and the the criminal scum of Gotham to contend with, but Superman is also after him as well. In this reality, Superman had become a government hero, becoming the loyal ally to the President of the United States. Kind of like his guard dog, really. And the President of the United States does not take too kindly to Batman's return. In the end, the two must face off in a famous fight that would go on to inspire multiple narratives, including the Batman v Superman film from the DCEU. Number 4. Damian Wayne One of the darkest Batmen to arise would be Damian Wayne's Batman. Damien takes up the cape and cowl in a possible future story featured in Batman issue 666. Get it? 666. Known as Batman in Bethlehem. Batman in Bethlehem is a story where, in the future, Damian Wayne sells his soul to Satan in order to ensure Gotham's protection. This drastic measure happens in a world where people really are looking for some kind of security as climate change, war, and acts of terror threaten the entire planet, turning it into a hellish futuristic landscape. This future version of Damien, who becomes Batman, also seems to be impervious to gunfire and no longer restrains himself from killing those who oppose him. Kind of like. My dad was here so that I could like be this Batman later. I feel like Daddy Batman would not be too happy with you, Damien. He would be like, don't kill people, but you're gonna do what you're gonna do, I guess. It's a different world. Number three, Thomas Wayne. Although it might seem weird to put Thomas Wayne on this list, as he's Batman's father, and so in a way is like part of his past, in the alternate future known as Flashpoint, Thomas actually becomes Batman instead of Bruce. This is after Bruce is killed, causing Thomas to make a plan to get vengeance and inspiring him to become a vigilante fighting for justice on the streets of Gotham. Martha, however, kind of goes the opposite way with it. The death of Bruce causes her to basically go insane. Unable to move on or let go, she ends up haunted by his memory and becomes the villain known as the Joker, becoming Thomas's sworn nemesis, despite the love that they once shared. What a tragic story. Number 2, Dick Grayson. Helena isn't the only one to carry on Batman and Catwoman's legacy on Earth 2. Let's not forget that before Helena was born, Batman had an adoptive son in the boy wonder known as Robin, aka Dick Grayson, often known as the original Robin across many different worlds. On Earth 2, Dick Grayson would end up taking his adoptive father's mantle before Helena did and operate as Batman for a time. He settles down with Barbara Gordon and the two even have a son together who they name John. Dick, however, loses the use of his legs when he becomes paralyzed by the Joker shooting him through the stomach, which damages his spine. Sound familiar? Dick would later become Oracle. In this reality, Barbara ends up as a cop who gets shot and dies while attempting to help her family flee Darkseid's invasion. Their son John grows up to become his Aunt Helena's sidekick, Robin. Super cute. I like it. Not Babs' death though. I don't like that. That's that's not nice. Number one, Terry McGinnis. When it comes to Batman, there are actually a lot of people who would be suited to don the cape and cowl. Sometimes in his stead, and other times as those who would take up the mantle after he dies or he retires. In the case of Terry McGinnis, he was pretty much created to become the new Batman. Using Bruce's own DNA, Amanda Waller designed Terry as part of her project Batman Beyond. She basically overwrote the reproductive DNA of Terry's father and chose the McGinnis 
McGinnis family to create the modern genetic Bruce Wayne duplicate because their psychological profiles were close matches to Bruce's own parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne. Which means that, you know, when Terry grows up, he should be like pretty much a perfect replica. Even more so if his parents had been assassinated like Amanda wanted, but uh, didn't work out for Waller there. <laughs> Probably for the best though, I don't think you should assassinate people's parents just to turn them into Batman, that seems pretty messed up, even for Amanda Waller. Number 10, Peter B. Parker. This alternate future version of Peter Parker hails from the Into the Spider-Verse multiverse. He is the older, mid-30s to approaching, perhaps middle-aged Spider-Man, also known as Peter B. Parker. With the B in his name presumably standing for Benjamin, like the main continuity Peter of 616. In this reality, Peter is all grown up. He settles down with MJ, only to later get divorced as Mary Jane wanted kids but Peter wasn't ready. It's clear that this Peter Parker regrets some of his life choices, namely hurting MJ and wants her back. He is pulled into Miles' reality thanks to Kingpin's super colliders experiments. Peter attempts to train Miles while also teaming up with him to defeat Kingpin and return both himself and the other alternate spider folks back to their home realities before it's too late. Number 9. Officer Parker In the alternate future of Earth X, Peter and Mary Jane's daughter May does not die and instead lives, growing up to become that reality's venom. MJ dies of cancer before things start to get wild on Earth X, leaving Peter to take care of his daughter alone. Their relationship becomes strained as Peter doesn't believe that May can actually control the symbiote, when in reality, she can. In this future, Peter's identity is also revealed to the public by Norman Osborn when he takes over the Daily Bugle, which also runs the paper out of business due to the revelation that the hero they called a supposed menace had been on their payroll the whole time. Eventually, Peter is convinced to join the New York police force by Luke Cage, and he works hard to protect the people of New York and later their scarce food supply. When the polls are reversed and New York freezes over as a result. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists about future alternate versions of Spidey, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8. Final Stand Spider-Man Not all future Spider-Men finish life happy, and not all of them even are still considered heroes in the end. With Final Stand Spider-Man, the world is a lot more bleak in this future. This is an alternate future version of Peter Parker from a possible future that Madam Web gets a glimpse into. Here Peter Parker ends up killing Kraven the Hunter and goes on to kill Dr. Octopus. He ends up betraying those he loves and in the end when the NYPD hunt him down, giving him an opportunity to surrender and admit to his crimes, Spider-Man refuses. He is shot and killed in this final stand. Number 7. Avengers Forever This is actually actually a version of future Spider-Man often referred to as Spider-Man 2099. Not THE Spider-Man 2099 though, as I said this is an alternate version of that alternate version of Spider-Man. This Spider-Man 2099 is still Miguel O'Hara, but instead of hailing from the 2099 reality of Earth 928, this version of Miguel hails from the reality of Earth 98120, as seen in the 90s comic series Avengers Forever. In this alternate future, Miguel ends up joining the Avengers, but unfortunately later meets his end at the totemic life force draining hands of Moreland the Inheritor during the Spider-Verse event. Number 6. The CEO As we said before, not all future versions of Spider-Man are heroes. Case in point, the Peter Parker who is still alive in 2099, as seen in the story from the 2011 video game, Spider-Man Edge of Time. Here Peter Parker lives on to the year 2099 thanks to anti-aging tech. He fakes his own death as Spider-Man and operates in the shadows, becoming the CEO of the company Alchemex. He is one of the villains of the game who Spider-Man Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, must face in the end. Although Peter ends up a secret antagonist and villain, his goal at least is somewhat altruistic here. Peter wants to rewrite the timeline so that he can bring back all those that he's lost during his time as a hero. In the end, this Peter presumably gets erased from the time stream after a younger version of Peter Parker is convinced to not go down this path and never become the CEO of Alchemex. Number 5. Spider-Man 2211 Spider-Man 22 11 is like Spider-Man 2099, but from even farther into the future. He is known as a time spinner and does his best to protect the time field. This version of Spider-Man is named Max Bourne and his appearance also differs from the Spider-Man of Earth 616 and the Spider-Man of 2099 in the regard that his costume has multiple mechanized arms. Kind of like Dr. Octopus or more specifically Dr.
Dr. Octopus's look when he became Spider-Man and was known as Superior Spider-Man. Max Boren's arch nemesis is Hobgoblin of 2211, who it turns out is actually his own daughter, Robin. <gasps> Gasp. Along with Spider-Man of 616 and Spider-Man of 2099, he faces and defeats Hobgoblin only for her true identity to be revealed to him. Number 4. Rain Specifically, Spider-Man Rain. This future version of Spider-Man hails from an even bleaker reality than Final Stand Spider-Man, hailing from the comic known as Spider-Man Rain. Here, Peter ends up working at a flower shop after years of being a hero. No longer operating as Spider-Man, this version of Peter has become somewhat senile, frail, and old. He is also haunted by his past, having hallucinations of Mary Jane, who is now long dead. Mary Jane in this reality apparently died from being close to Peter, which he carries immense guilt over. Apparently his radioactiveness was not so good for MJ's body, ended up giving her cancer and sadly killed her in the end. Peter eventually does return to heroics, but even then it's a pretty sad return, with him mostly getting his butt whooped when he isn't busy being swept up in some kind of fantasy or hallucination of his past. Number 3 MC2 In the MC2 reality of Earth 982, Peter Parker actually gets to grow up and settle down with MJ. The two do end up married with kids, with daughter May, Mayday Parker, successfully being born. May grows up to have spider powers like her dad and eventually becomes known as the hero Spider Girl, living up to her family legacy and becoming a hero in her own right herself. Peter and MJ in this reality also have another child, May's younger brother, Benji. Benji, as a youngster, also displays abilities and powers. He also goes on to have an adventure as a little tyke with Carnage, unintentionally bonding with the symbiote. Fortunately, his older sister May is able to save him, although for a time, Ben would actually suffer from permanent hearing loss as a result of that rescue. Number 2. Jerry Drew In the same future that MC2 Peter hails from, known as the alternate reality of Earth 982, Jessica Drew, aka Spider Woman, also has a child. MC2 is notoriously known for being the reality where superheroes get to grow up, retire, or settle down to live a somewhat normal life, possibly amidst continued heroics for those, of course, who don't retire. As such, Jessica is also one of those heroes. She gets married and ends up pregnant, but unfortunately, her son Jerry is born with a rare bloodborne illness. In an attempt to cure Jerry, Jessica submits him to the same experimentation which saved her as a child and also gave her spider powers. The same happens to Jerry, who also gets spider powers and ends up becoming a hero, taking up the mantle, Spider Man. After being inspired by stories that his mom tells him of her days as a hero and of Spider Man's adventures. Number one, Spider. Spider Man 2099. What would a future Spider Man list be without the future Spider Man? That's right, we're talking about Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider Man 2099. Or just Spider Man, really, as he's known in his own world, because it is 2099, so people don't just go like, hey, that's that hero 2099, and that's that villain 2099. 2099 is often thought of as being the future for the main comic book continuity of Earth 616. Here, Miguel wasn't always actually the most altruistic guy, which I think is part of what makes him so cool as a character. He's got flaws. And becoming Spider-Man is part of his journey to becoming a better person. He becomes better as an individual as he becomes a hero. Miguel also comes with a futuristic look and some future tech as well. He got powers after submitting himself to his own experiments in the hopes of ridding himself of an addiction that was forced on him by the company he worked for, Alchemax, in order to prevent him from quitting. That's a pretty intense way to try to get someone to not quit. Be like, well, we create this uh, substance and we're gonna give it to you without you knowing, and now you have uh, an addiction to it, and now you have to keep working for us if you want that thing. So uh, there you go. But thank goodness Miguel found a way around that. <laughs>